Tesla has applied for a patent on a new electrolyte solution for a new lithium metal or anode free battery cells. As International Energy Association says, battery technology is rapidly improving for electric cars. So Tesla patents anode free battery technology welcome back dear friends this is armin harian from torquenews.com please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell when you subscribe so you may be notified when i upload my next tesla or ev story over the last year we have been reporting on tesla's battery research partner jeff dunn and his team at dalhouse university in canada unveiling the impressive results of tests on a new battery cell that could last over 1 million miles in an electric vehicle the team has been working for tesla to improve energy density and longevity of battery cells while reducing the battery cost but dunn who is a pioneer in li-ion battery battery technology and his team have also been working on next generation battery technology beyond improving on current technology. Last year we reported on the team patenting an anode free lithium metal cell for Tesla that they suggested could be the next big thing in battery technology instead of solid state batteries. They are still working on the new cells as evidenced by a new patent application dance team for Tesla's Canadian research group electrolytes with lithium dufluoroborate and lithium uh, tetrafluoroborate salts for lithium metal and anode free battery cells. I know this sounded very uh, confusing that I will put this in the description of this video friends so you can see. So Tesla writes about the current problems with lithium metal batteries in the patent application. Here is what Tesla says. Rechargeable batteries are an integral component of energy storage systems for electric vehicles and for grid storage for example for backup power during a power outage as part of microgrid and so forth. Some such rechargeable battery systems include lithium metal and anode free lithium batteries lithium metal and anode free lithium batteries have certain advantages over traditional lithium ion batteries as they are more energy dense anode free cells are also less expensive and easier to assemble due to their lack of anode coating however challenges with lithium metal and anode free lithium batteries have prevented their widespread adoption improving certain characteristics of lithium metal and anode free battery systems will allow for more widespread use of such systems for instance developing electrolyte compositions that allow for commercially acceptable cycling performance of lithium metal and anode free lithium batteries is critical to gaining adoption of such battery systems this is the end of the quote in short it offers great advantages when it comes to energy density and costs but it needs improvements when it comes to longevity dan's team claims that its new electrolyte would help improve just that the longevity it is what they say in a quote provided our electrolyte solutions including both lithium dufluoroborate and lithium tetrafluoroborate and a solvent component for use in lithium metal or anode free rechargeable battery cells and methods of using the electrolyte solutions to improve capacity retention of the battery cells also provided our rechargeable battery systems including including a lithium metal or anode free battery cells and electrolyte solutions including both lithium dufluoroborate and lithium tetrafluoroborate and a solvent component the systems described here herein exhibit improved capacity retention in the patent application they do release test results showing improvements in battery capacity retention but they do not seem to have pushed the cells beyond 50 cycles for now they would need to put the batteries to more and more many more cycles in order to make them viable for commercialization as we reported earlier this year, the Tesla researchers published work on a hybrid lithium metal battery as an all-electric car range extender. It's important to note that Tesla, like most other companies, will sometimes patent technologies that won't ever actually go into production. More about Tesla's battery plans is expected to be announced on September 15 during the battery day. During that day, Tesla's battery day, we will know more exactly what Tesla wants to do with these patents and 
or which direction or which of its patents Tesla will choose for commercialization. Now, over the 2.1 million plug-in vehicles, pure electric plus plug-in hybrids were sold globally in 2019, a 40% year-on-year increase over 2018, which was itself a record year. Plug-in cars accounted for about 2.6 of global car sales. Electrification has been rapid. This is where batteries are so important. In 2010, there were a mere 17,000 plug-in vehicles on the world road. By 2019, the number had grown to some 7.2 million vehicles, electric vehicles, about 1% of the global auto fleet. The growth has been concentrated in a few regions. 47% of the world's plug-ins are in China but it is gradually expanding geographically. Nine countries had more than 100,000 plug-in cars on the road in 2019, and market share has passed 1% in at least 20 countries. The new International Energy Association report, e, uh, IEA, uh, International Energy Association report, has several interesting things to say, especially concerning electric buses and two and three wheels vehicles, which are expected to be major growth segments in China and India. It only briefly mentions the world's most prominent electric automaker Tesla, but the impressions of Tesla's tire prints are hard to detect in the actually aren't hard, hard to detect in the sections on projected trends in the battery field. Briefly stated, battery capacities are going up and battery costs are going down and Tesla continues to be an important driver of both these trends. By 2030, the IEA, International Energy Association, expects the average electric vehicle to have a battery size of 70 to 80 kilowatt hour and an average range of 217 to 240 Eight miles. That figure may sound overly conservative to a Tesla owner. That is minimum 250 miles is about the lowest range you can get in a Tesla today. However, maximum range isn't everything and the IEA may be projecting large numbers of low-priced electric vehicles aimed at buyers for whom a 200-mile range is quite sufficient. Indeed, if you are driving, uh, if your daily commute is only 10 miles, 20 miles uh, on one way, you don't need more than 200 miles range on a, on for your daily commute. So the International Energy Association uh, expects global EV battery capacity to explode, figuratively speaking, of course, from around 100 170 gigawatt hour per year today to a 1.5 terawatt hour per year in 2030 in the stated police uh, policy scenario based on existing government policies or 3 terawatt hour in the sustainable development scenario scenario based on the climate uh, goals of the Paris agreement Modes of transport other than cars are expected to uh, account for only 11% of battery demand in 2030. So electric passenger cars, Tesla specifically, uh, specialty are central to the development of the battery market. Electric car batteries costs are expected to continue their steady downward trend. According to the IEA, battery pack prices averaged more than $1,100 per kilowatt hour in 2010, only 10 years ago. But nine years after that, in 2019, they had fallen from $1,100 per kilowatt hour to $156 per kilowatt hour. Industry pundits post that a pack level price of 100 kilowatt hour will prove to be the tipping point at which electric vehicles can be sold for the same price as legacy vehicles and will herald the final days of the oil age. No automaker publishes the price of its packs, but it's widely believed that Tesla's costs are below the industry average and some expect the company to announce that it has cracked or at least gotten close to the uh, that number $100 uh, dollar mark at battery day on September 15. This is why these patents uh, of Tesla, this Tesla's these battery patents are very important for us to understand where Tesla is going. One of the main reasons that costs have declined, the battery costs, is that production volumes have increased, a trend traceable to a certain battery factory in Nevada. Uh, the IEA report notes that 
the delivery of new mass market models such as the Tesla Model 3 caused a spike in sales in 2018 in key markets such as United States. As costs have declined, battery costs of course, energy density has increased and there is every reason to believe that this trend will continue. Scientists tell us that there is a theoretical limit to the density that can be achieved with lithium-ion technology but the IEA believes that substantial room for improvement remains. Researchers all over the world are working diligently to improve all three key components of Li-ion cells, cathodes, anodes and electrolytes and now we see that Tesla is patenting a anode-free battery. That's very interesting. Battery makers are also constantly working on new and improved ways to assemble the cells into packs. For example, Tesla has reportedly investigated a, a design that puts cells directly into the pack without modules, which can, uh, could save as much as 25% in production costs. Scientists are working on other beyond lithium-ion technologies, including lithium metal, lithium sulfur, so Sodium iron and lithium air and advances are regularly being reported. However, the International Energy Association expects the Li ion battery to remain the mainstay of EV market for the next decade. Another important area to watch over the next few years is the global battery supply chain. Producing batteries involves substantial environmental costs. To minimize these, as volume increases will require increasing the energy density of batteries, increasing energy efficiency, and using more low carbon energy sources in uh, mini main mining and refining raw materials, sales, manufacturing, and pack assembly, and ensuring appropriate end of life battery management. Second life reuse and recycling, for example. Make no mistake, friends, however, electrified vehicles are already greener than gas burners, and they are steadily getting greener. The International Energy Association report unequivocally states, as many others have, that the lifetime greenhouse gas emissions of plug-in vehicles are lower than those of an average internal combustion engine. And this is why Tesla's patent of anode-free battery tech as, uh, is very important as electric vehicle batteries rapidly improve. So well, let me know what you think about these developments, friends. What are your thoughts and what we can expect on the September 15th when Tesla hopefully holds its battery day? Um, I personally expect to hear more on September 15 than from the upcoming Tesla's earnings call, which I uh, reported just now. I think it's next week, uh, July 22nd or 24th. I don't exactly remember, but it's in my report, uh, just I previously reported. In the meantime, friends, this is Armin Haryan from TorqueNews.com. Please subscribe to our channel, join our community, look our community page. I post interesting things there and interesting things for discussion there. And um, please also ring the bell so may you, when you uh, subscribe, so you may be notified when I upload my next story. Friends, have a wonderful day. Take good care of each other and look for my two more um, two more stories. One is about Giga Berlin and how Tesla is playing with Legos at Giga Berlin construction. It's very interesting and you will see lots of very beautiful pictures. And also another report about Tesla's four upcoming Giga factories that is in Tesla's planning. Talk to you soon. Have a great day. God bless you and take good care of your families. Peace be with you.